Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Vulnerable Entrepreneurs, coming at you from the great city of Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm Sean Riley. And I'm Common Thrath. And today, like always, we're having a no bullshit conversation about the entrepreneurial way of life. Sean, where do you think we get our energy from to perform? I think there's a lot of talk around energy, but like, where can we harness and find the energy to go out there and, and be a leader or go out there and be a good parent? It comes from the personal side, but where does it come from? How do we harness it when it gets low? You know, I, I think to answer that, there's a couple of different ways to look at it, right? I mean, first, the way I look at it is everything is derived from your mind and your body, right? So you have to feed it, right? But it's way more complex than feed it with food. You certainly need nutrition, right? And you and I have talked about this before, and you need to eat well and to, you know, quote unquote, be healthy. Okay, so that's going to provide you the raw, I would say, opportunity for energy. But you as the person not only have to create that drive and desire, but you have to kind of point it in that way to support that drive and desire and purpose like we've talked about before. For example, like now that I'm getting older, I do take more supplements than I've used to in the past. I didn't really take a lot of them in the past. I take, you know, not a lot, but I take a few now just to kind of take a little pressure off my body to create that absence that it needs to. I mean, when you get older, you're going to lose melatonin and a whole bunch of other things. And you need to supplement that a little bit. But my point is you have to, as a person has to create it. And then once you created it, you have to do something with it, right? You have all the opportunity in the world which is the good thing. The bad thing is you have all the opportunity in the world to direct that energy to create wherever you want to do it. Do I want to be productive today? Do I not? Do I want to eat like crap? And or what I would argue work like crap and be like crap, or do you want to try and eat healthy and, you know, create that energy within yourself, but you have to do it within yourself. So we're not cars that can just, you fill it up with gas. And if, as long as you do a little bit of maintenance, it's going to, run the same way all the time, regardless, right? We're more complicated than that. You actually have to feed yourself with the fuel, but then you have to do something with it. You actually have to exert it somehow. I mean, you know, I do it a couple of different ways. Supplements is one, exercise, eating healthy. I don't say diet, just eating healthy. And that's not like this, okay, I'm all of a sudden I'm a, a superpower keto person. It's just eating healthier, right? Smaller portions, you know, whatever it is that works best for you. And then it's mindset. We've talked about this before. Meditation, calming your body down, refocusing on where you want that energy that you've now created. Where do you want it to point to? Is it work? Is it family? Is it a project? Is it a journaling? What, whatever that is in that split second or that time that you've allotted yourself that's what you're using that energy for. And then the other thing too, is you don't want to bleed it out. Like this whole multitasking thing is hysterical to me because, oh, I can, I can do five things at once. Yeah. Well, A, you know, you can't and B, you can't do it well. So you're going to create all that energy. You're going to point it to the thing that you're going to do and stay focused on it. Otherwise you're going to bleed that energy off, picking up your phone or not paying attention to a conversation. Or you talk about this too, about being present, you know? So it's funny to me, you created all this energy, you're eating right, you're sleeping well, it's all built up inside you, you have a surplus of it, you're ready to use it, and then you go spraying it across five different things that aren't gonna, it's just not gonna work, right? So you have to use it to your advantage and be smart about it and really try to stay focused. And it's hard, but try to stay focused on whatever that thing is that you're trying to focus on right now, you know? One of the best things I learned about meditation, honest to God, was the fact that sometimes you're just not going to be able to meditate and it's okay. Like just stop and bring yourself back to that focus. It's the same thing with working on project works or, you know, being an entrepreneur. It's like, okay, yeah, my mind is racing right now. I need to find calm and I need to redevote that energy to whatever it is that needs to get done. Priority list, to-do list, milestones, goals, whatever it is, KPIs. You got to direct it right. Otherwise, you're just spraying it all over the place. And it's not going to be effective, right? Yeah, I actually have this post-it note right here on my, my monitor. And it says, no one takes it from you. You give it away. You give it away. That's right. That's so, right. 
yeah. I've gotten much better with, if I'm doing something, you know, we have Slack, you get email, you get texts, people are calling you. If you're working from home, someone from the house is trying to grab your attention. You, if you, if it's kids or just another, you know, my wife, you know, she works, but she I mean, asked me a question. So it's so easy to get distracted, but when I can control the work part, it's like I put on a Slack message, do not disturb. Like I'm working because you got to focus because what happens if you're not hundred percent into something, you're only 70% because then like you, you're jumping from like an email and then you go into Slack and then you go into your project management software, you know, if, if you're using that and then you go into a, a Zoom meeting and then you're working, just regular working. And then this is just like, you have to just really block that time. So what I do to kind of like yeah. control my energy so I'm not feeling like burnt out by the end of the day. And, and, and I still do, I'm human, right? I do feel burnt out, but there are more days where I'm not because I'm controlling where I am giving it away or where am I focusing and being present. So right now I'm deep in working some operations processes that I'm fixing or are really evolving. And I, I need to have that deep think work and I can't, I got to block out an hour and a half. If, if I'm doing something in between, I'm, I'm affecting the output, but also like I'm doing a disservice right to my company because yeah, I want to be present to my team members, but then I'm not completing something that's going to benefit the company more exponentially. If I actually finish like building out some of these processes that the team is looking to use. Right. Yeah. And you know, you bring up a good point, like being an entrepreneur or, you know, specifically in your case, being the boss, I, I'm thinking if everybody came into your office on a daily basis and said, yeah, come on, here's my project. Thanks for giving it to me. I thank you for empowering me to do this. By the way, I gave it 70%. You'd be like, well, what? That's unacceptable. But we as entrepreneurs, we do it all the time. It's a badge of honor to be, I got 400 emails today. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's not, that's not a badge of honor. That's stupid. Right? So my point is like, it's just different being an entrepreneur and a leader. You, you have to immerse yourself in that group and really treat yourself like you're not the boss. You're being, okay, like you said, Instead of being calm, the entrepreneur, and I need a deep dive in this for 90 minutes, be calm, the worker. It's like, okay, uh, my boss, my company, your entire company is your boss. And really failure is your boss, right? Gave you this task. You have 90 minutes to do it. It's pretty important. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it. So I better do 100% of that. And if you keep that going, you know, I, like I say this in my personal life, too, as well as my, my professional life, like, you can't give away that energy. You, you got to focus on keeping it. Otherwise, you're just going to fail at everything and nobody wants you to, to fail. Like, you can't fail as a dad. You can't fail as a husband. Like Everybody wants you to be present 100% of the time. So do that, <laughs> right? If <laughs> your wife needs to talk to you, you are 100% present in that question, in that discussion, in that argument, wh whatever it is you're a hundred percent present, not just for the other party, but for you too. Like you need to do that too for your own good. Right. I think we all try to be present, but sometimes the reality is I'm human. My wife will ask me something and I'll, like, I'll be like, yes. Yep. And then I get back to what I'm doing. And then a week goes by. She's like, remember I asked you to like send that email to register, you know, our son for the sports, you know, whatever thing. I'm like, no, she's like, you said, yes. And I know she was correct. So like I've caught myself, well, yeah, well, I'm not present. So if you feel you're not going to be present, which is tough for you to know if you're going to be, be present mindfully to, to try to switch gears while you're deep thinking, mm -hmm. you got to catch yourself because then what happens, other people rely on you to be focused because there's errors and, you know, it could be as important as like submitting, you know, medical documents for something for your kids before they do something. And then you say, oh yeah, I'll send that email later today. And then you totally forgot. So like you have to be present and be mindful and just real, it's just hard. It's easy to say, not easy to do because like, I still make yeah. mistakes on this, but I'm way better. I probably improved 200% over the last two years and, yeah. and, you know, really be able to focus on like the conversations I'm having with my kids. Those are just as important. The conversations I'm having with my wife or my coworkers, because kids remember too, like they're asking me to help them yeah. with a book or they're asking me a question about you know, this Lego thing and I'm trying to answer it because as much as it might not be important to us because we have bigger things that are important to us, it's still really important to them. They remember that. So it's like just being mindful and, and knowing too, like your energy will be split like this, but you got to be very intentional 
on the focus and the energy you're putting in, because what happens is you exert more energy later trying to fix it. Cause then now you have this negative energy coming in. Cause like you let someone down or you made a mistake right. and now you're putting out fires. That's right. That's exactly right. And you know, doing it the second time, you're not going to do it any better. You're going to do it worse. You're going to do it in a hurry. Cause now it's a, I just got to get this done as opposed to, oh, I should have done this right the first time. And it's a drag. You're just like, oh, whatever it is, this sucks. Energy is a powerful thing in humans. It gives us, you know, fuel to do things. But then there's also the other piece of it too. The energy stuff is that you get energy from other places and people and situations. Like, you, you know, you people say it's really a vibration it's called, but you know, people say, oh, well, I got a bad vibe when I walked in there. It's like, yeah, that's the energy that your body is reacting to. You and I were just talking off camera about this with, you know, animal. I don't know what, you know, humans are blessed with the most advanced mind in the universe and we're cursed with the most advanced mind in the universe. Animals pick up on it. Little children pick up on it. And then somehow we grow out of it. We disallow ourselves to feel this energy. But you've walked into a place before as an adult and like, wow, that feels, that's just horrible in here. Oh, I must be nervous. You immediately dismiss your physical reaction to a play. It's interesting. I was in St. Thomas a few months ago, October, I guess, or maybe November, whenever the hell it was. And they had this one restaurant that was open late. The bar was open late. And it was like this formal restaurant, but we would just go in for drinks at night. And the energy was awful. I never felt comfortable in there for a second. I'd walk in, they would sit down. Everybody was irritated at this, I liked them, but he was an older bartender that just couldn't keep up. The wait staff is getting on him. He's turning around and feeling that stress and then passing it on to everybody around him, right? There's other people in there. A couple of people were drunk and like every night they would go from laughing incredibly loud to arguing. It's just the vibe of the place was, well, this is awful. Every time I walked in, I could actually feel my mood change it. I'm like, this energy is just, it's just awful. And you go into places like that. If you open yourself up to it, you can get that back. It's way more innate when you're a child because we're so conditioned as adults to just, oh, you know, you just got to grind it out, get through it, power through it, you know, but it's still bad energy. And, you know, I'm trying to a little bit through meditation, get myself back into feeling that you, I walk into some place and I'm like, whoa, this place is not good. And that affects you. You know, there's a lot to be said for work environments, cubicles, the whole cubicle of the decades, you know, let's build cubicles, you know, that we need to encourage collaboration. Like, honestly, that's not the way decorations aren't the way to do it. Taking the walls down aren't necessarily the way to do it. And that energy flows through offices and come, you've walked into meetings, I'm sure in your own company you'd be like whoa what's wrong everybody like i can feel it what's the problem it's energy you can feel that in zoom meetings i mean Absolutely. right now it's the tone of people how they're talking the rate i mean you can hear it in the sound you know if people have the cameras on and off i mean i get it like putting your cameras on could be their scientific evidence it's a lot of work right for your brain to process seeing so many people but you need those cues, those mannerism cues by seeing people's facial expressions. So that's a way to get an indicator as well. That's how I kind of gauge like Zoom meetings. And you can usually tell when the energy, when people are just, you know, it's just like talking to friends. There's a difference between like having a productive meeting professionally versus one that you can just tell people don't want to be there. Yeah. And what I try to do sometimes, I don't do it often enough is you, know, you can play music, some good upbeat music where people are waiting versus it's kind of awkward sometimes when you're waiting in in the room with three other people and one more person needs to come in here so if you can create some type of buffer or icebreaker some little just background music that helps lighten i think the whole energy um, oh yeah <laughs> yeah silence is deafening i mean you walk into a room and nobody's talking you can feel that tension that, that's not necessarily bad energy but there's a nervous tension throw on white noise or like jazz or some kind of just flowy background music it cuts through that and churns it up and allows it not to stick so bad when there's just silence i think 
I told you this before, sit in your house or sit in your car somewhere, like an empty parking lot, close your eyes and listen to how loud silence is. It's deafening what goes on in your head when you don't hear something and allow yourself to react to that. It's like a, a New York street in the middle of the day is how loud silence is. It's nuts, nuts. To try that, I've never done that before. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Or if you get up like before anybody else does in the middle of the night, just lay there and listen to how loud silence is. <laughs> it's <laughs> deafening. <laughs> but yeah, energy takes on, you know, and you, you got to harness it and you got to use it to your advantage. Otherwise, it's going to be a disadvantage. You got to know what to do with it once you get it. Filling up the tank isn't doing anything if you don't know how to drive. You put all the fuel in it you want. You're not going to go anywhere. And you're certainly not going to go where you want to go. Energy is powerful. Earlier this week, I had, no, actually it was last week. I had two days of just really, it was a tough day. My wife, she even sensed it. She's like, something's been bothering this week. I'm like, oh, I just feel like it's Murphy's Law. Like all this stuff is not going the way I want it to. And you know, there's some miscommunication with clients. Like just everything is going wrong, right? So, you know, I had a choice to be down and just to kind of be, angry and just like you know use this energy and just like let it like blow into the wind right or harness mm -hmm. it and redirect it into something productive so you know i couldn't sleep because i was just like focusing on like what was happening how did this happened how do i avoid it how do i fix it of course make sure the clients are happy because that's you know all you have is your reputation so it was something that was just miscommunicated but totally could be rectified but i'm like okay how can i avoid this in the future what do i need to empower my team to do better on this and catch it earlier so I just started just taking notes and started kind of like working. Like I was doing like a process map. So then in the morning, the next day, I kind of had the framework, but I, I got it off. That energy was just brewing in me. And I couldn't sleep. So yeah. I got it off my mind and then I was able to rest because I knew like I put a little bit of closure and I got some process around it. But anything that's negative, like take that. I think negative energy is probably one of the strongest, right? You know, if it's anger or fear or you can, you yeah. can really harness that thing into almost like uh <laughs> i'm thinking well, yeah. i'm thinking like street fighter when <laughs> he's just he's that fireball <laughs> yeah well you <laughs> the know, video game you bring up a great point like i think that negative energy is more kinetic than positive energy. you're you know driving one of those big ocean liners they take like something like four miles or something to stop and reverse course like you have a bad day you know it's easy it's a buzzword to say well you know it's a light switch to change. Well, the decision to change is the light switch. I am this, I'm going to be this, yes, light switch. The doing of it though, has a long tail to it. It has kinetic energy that's built up. Oh, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. You know, That doesn't mean after the day you're had that you're gonna be able to sleep it off because hey, by the way, you actually have to fall asleep first. So there's a long kinetic energy to that. In that case, you could probably work out or meditate, or you have to do something to flush it out of your system. You can't just let the thing go away because it's a 50-50 shot that it might fester and take longer to go away. And now you're tired and you're starting your day at a disadvantage because you're letting now yesterday affect you. So you got to do something to flush it out. You got to do something to really slow down that energy. And, and I recommend too, let it wash over you. Yeah, you know what, this is too much for me. I'm gonna be in a bad mood for a day, two days, two hours, 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna to start to functionally pull up out of that nosedive. But there is kinetic energy. You can't just say, oh, I'm pissed right now. You know, in two seconds, okay, I'm better. Well, that's just cheating yourself out of your ability to heal, whether it's a shitty day at work or a shitty day, you know, at home. And everybody cares about you and everybody cares about themselves, which is to say that nobody cares. Like your family doesn't care that you came home work grumpy. They do to an extent, but they want you to be dad or husband. They don't want the damaged dad or husband. You have a shitty night's sleep. Now you're tired, dad, irritated dad and husband in the morning. So you go to work and now your corporate culture is that of negativity that day because you're dragging ass into work and you're probably still thinking about yesterday. You know, you can't sit in dirty water in the tub and think you're going to get clean. That water's going to drain out eventually, man. You got to let it go. You got to push it out somehow. Whatever it is people are into as long as it's healthy, you know, like if it's like I said, working out or meditation or 
being alone for a while or being with people. I mean, that's as individual as we are as people. But you can't just sit there and say, okay, it's all pent. I've allowed it to come inside of me. You got to do something to get rid of it. You just can't carry it. I mean, people get unhealthy because of that. You know, people carry anger and disappointment and fear in them with no outlet. That's why people are overweight. That's why they don't eat right. That's why they get sick. Your body's like, okay, you no longer have the ability to make a decision to make yourself happy. So we're just going to start shutting shit down. You're going to be exhausted. Then we're going to make you sick. Then you're going to have organ failure. And then you're going to get really sick until you listen up and say, this is a, I mean, energy is a physical thing and it's something that has a huge impact on us. And we got to do a good job in, you know, clearing it out, getting rid of it. That's what I think anyways. I like the analogy of the dirty water. You're right. You got to know yourself. Like actually I was talking to a friend and he, company's booming, but he knew better to like, Hey, I'm actually going to I'm going to fly down and go play golf by myself in Florida. Like we're in Massachusetts, right? So he has family, but his wife also knew there's something he needed, right? So I think it's a conversation to have with your family, but he knew better. Like I need this like reset button because he knew something had to change and he wasn't able to, he was trying everything, like all the tips that you were saying, Sean, but he needed a different reset button. So you got to be honest with yourself because again, if you're not hundred percent where you are and you're always going to be at 60%, it starts to eat away at you. Then now you're at 50%, and then you get ill, like you said. So it's drastic, but I mean, I, some people might judge him, right? But who cares? Like you got to do what's best for yourself. You got to take care of yourself first you know, before you can you take care to. of others. And I think yeah. you have that great analogy. You talk about when the plane's going down. I think you have that analogy about <laughs> oxygen your mask. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to put yours on first. I mean... <laughs> You just, you got to, otherwise, whoever is next to you, if they can't get it on, now you're both dead. But there's a lot of truth to that too. You have to do what works. And like I was saying, the light switch part of it is a decision. You can't really tell how long it's going to get over something or how long it's going to take you to get positive. For me, I look at it, I try to shorten it if something's bothering me almost as a self challenge because my biggest thing is the value of my time, not to anybody else, but to me. I'm like, do I really want to let this go? Is this that important that if I drop dead tonight, this is it for me? And I'm like, no, there's nothing that is that important. So you have to have some kind of mantra or thesis or something that says, I need to get through this. Might take you longer than you thought, but you, you got to get that out of your system. It's really damaging to yourself physically, to your business, to other people. I mean, how much do you want to make people around you sacrifice, right? You, you got to get through it and get over it. Got to. I think a lot of people also know what they think is better for them. If it's eating healthy, what maybe the rest of your family doesn't choose to, not because they don't want to, but maybe it's from convenience or like you need to exercise and you know, that could help you. It's hard, but you need maybe some type of accountability. And you and I've had this conversation a lot about exercise and you, you invited me to things and I was, oh, I don't have the time. I'm, I'm, it could be excuses, but they were like a legitimate in my mind, but it wasn't a priority. And that was my biggest takeaway, you know, after yeah. probably like two years of you talking about it, you're telling me you're going to these tough mutters and like Navy SEALs camps. And I'm just <laughs> like, how does this guy do all this stuff amongst like running a company and traveling the world and being around his yeah. family? But what happens is you prioritize all this stuff and you kind of chose where you wanted to put your focus and energy. So ever since I started doing that, this has now been several months. I've had better energy, a better positive energy. Yeah. My son, who's seven, started working out with me. So he's actually my accountability partner. But right. I, I use a virtual app actually. So I have this app, virtual trainer, who's a real person. He checks in with me every day. So I have accountability there, but then extra layer. And my son's now into it. And I also notice his energy is different. So, I mean, it, it does work, but not, you know, exercise doesn't work for everyone. Right. But once I made it a priority, which is the key takeaway here, I want people to understand is once you make whatever it is, the priority, and it's easily said than done, then the rest should hopefully fall around that. Um, it will. Because there's and so you- many things that you want to do, but. Not everything's a priority. And you have the biggest takeaway is that when you make that transition, you you now want to do it because you see all the benefits that you probably didn't before. Your son's one, your energy level's another, your company performance. That doesn't mean that, okay, 
I, I worked out today. I have a positive attitude. You know, we're going to start making millions of dollars. It doesn't work that way. What does change though, is your ability to adapt to that, to, to the same struggles that you have in a better, more positive way, which ultimately gets you through it quicker and more effectively. You're not dwelling on something for three weeks, eating a bag of potato chips every night, feeling like a piece of garbage only to wake up and feel worse. And then you have to slog through whatever it is that gets you there in the first place. You know what I mean? You're not your story is kind of the buzzword. You're not your story. What happens to you is not something that you can control. What you can control is how you react to it. Your environment is going to be your environment. You can't say, I'm never going to end a relationship. You can't say a relationship's never going to end. You can't say I'm going to cross the street and never get hit by a car. But what you can say is if this does happen, my mindset is such that I will be able to deal with it. You might not know how to, but the mindset, the priority is me. I, I can deal with it better. It doesn't necessarily always translate to monetary success if we're talking about your company or relationship but at least you can feel better about yourself. And, and that's positive, you know? Yeah, that, that's good energy. This is the last takeaway here and we'll wrap it up. And going back to earlier, we talked about negative energy, how it's so powerful. So I was trying to finish my last couple of sets in this workout. And throughout my workout, you know, like things didn't work with popping in my head, right? I'm trying to focus on my workout, right? Be present in it. And it was tough because the day before I had some struggles and I, had, I heard a news of someone that was, kind of doing some ill will against our company. And I was really kind of getting me really pissed off. And I'm like, why would someone do this? You know, we had never done anything negative to them, but I took that energy and that person in my mind and I just pumped out this slide. <laughs> and I was like, as much as, so I was like, that's how you harness that negative power, you know? And then I refocused it on that, but yeah, it, it felt good to kind of finish that. And I was like, ready to conquer the world after that. That's what it's all about. And, <laughs> and you know, the, we can devote a whole episode to what you just described, but it is the way I look at that and, and, and things is that you can't control that that happened. Whatever that person or company did to your company, or tried to do your company, you can't control it, right? At, at the moment, though, that that happens to you, you're either a victim for a split second or for as long as you're going to let it be a victim. What is the difference is your mindset in getting over it. Okay. I, I shouldn't say get over it, get through it. I'm not going to allow whatever X was to affect my mood. I'm going to roll on with it and do focus on being successful, positive, great, happy, all of that stuff. I say this about anything. Being a victim in anything is a choice. You, what, what is not a choice is if something bad will happen to almost all of us, right? It, 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 we're always hurt or it was something bad. That's the way the universe operates. But you choose whether to be a victim or not. That's a mindset thing. That's not a, this happened to me, I'm a victim. You are for the split second in which it happened to you. But right after that, you get to determine how that influenced you. And in some cases, changes your life. Is it for the good? Or for the bad, you took something that, you know, you could be a victim, you could have stewed about it for a day, a week, a month, you could have been like, screw this, I'm not doing it anymore. And you didn't you turn around like, oh, I'm gonna get through the workout and let's be done with it. Okay. And you turn something where you could have been a victim and very negative and you turn it into a positive. That's a pretty kick ass thing. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> nice, nicely All played, right. sir. Nicely played. Well, until next time, if you guys have any questions, shoot our way. Um, As always, <laughs> we are mostly ears. Appreciate your wisdom today, Sean. As always, my man. Love it. Find us on Facebook and LinkedIn at The Vulnerable Entrepreneurs. Twitter and Instagram at The VE Podcast. The VE Vulnerable Entrepreneur Podcast. And join the conversation by visiting us on our website, thevepodcast.com and email us at hello at thevepodcast.com Thanks everybody for joining us today. That wraps it up. We understand that every minute of your day is valuable and we appreciate you spending time with us today.